In this video now we'll look at inflation as part of the inflation and unemployment uh, video series. Okay, um, let's start with uh, inflation. Definition of inflation. Inflation is basically uh, kind of, well we usually use the word inflation and inflation rate interchangeably. Um, in general inflation refers to ri rising price levels. Um, in the next uh, few minutes I'll, I'll explain what inflation rate is. Deflation on the other hand refers to falling price levels. So um, if the prices are rising over time we are experiencing inflation and if the, the, if the prices are falling which is rare in 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 in, uh, in at time in times of uh, growing economic activity, the economic performance, usually uh, the economies experience inflation. Now, deflation is is a situation where the uh, economic activity slows down. But it well in in complex economies, it's probably difficult to s to say really. Uh, when or where, when, when, when we could expect deflation or when we could expect inflation, because if you look at Japan, a uh, very uh, an advanced economy, they usually experience deflation these days. I'll show you the time series of graph, uh, time series of uh, inflation rates in Japan that shows a negative uh, price growth uh, in the past 10 years, well almost 20 years now, not even 10 okay let's move ahead then so deflation refers to falling price levels now rate of inflation is then refers to percentage change in the price levels uh, between two points uh, in time so like usually inflation rates are measured uh, annually sometimes quarterly and, and in the uk it's monthly as well in many company uh, countries uh, your central banks and and relevant uh, uh, economic organizations or organizations that uh, or statistics organizations which uh, they, they can collect the data inflation data on a monthly basis now if the rate of inflation is positive we are experiencing inflation in other words the prices are rising and if the rates of inflation are negative then we are experiencing deflation a decline in prices and this there is also something called disinflation uh, this is generally the reduction in the rate of inflation now um, in other words there is inflation but then um, it's lower inflation than before say say this year we experience eight percent inflation and next year we experience two percent inflation rate you see it's still an inflation but the rate is lower and still positive so we call this situation a disinflation while on the other hand deflation is the rate of growth is actually negative so well so this year eight percent say next year the inflation rate is minus two so so from positive to negative rate so you see this is a case of uh, deflation def deflationary period or deflationary situation Okay, let's move ahead now. Um, what do we use to measure inflation? Now, uh, the common, quite often used ones in the UK and Europe is CPI and RPI. RPI is more UK specific. In fact, RPI was invented, well, first used in the UK in, in, in 1904, I think, to measure average workers' uh, monthly living costs. Uh, trade unions were kind of very strong at the time and they usually bargained with uh, with uh, capitalists at the time uh, for high wages uh, by using the RPI inflation rate as, as, a, as an evidence of rising costs, living costs. So RPI was in fact uh, first um, invented in the UK. CPI is something from, comes from EU in 19 i think it was something around 1966 these two are me i mean closed i mean they're they quite the same they're they're closely related but they both take a basket of goods uh, the goods that we consume every day food clothes petrol 
um, tickets, uh, airplane tickets, train tickets, uh, uh, the holiday packages and things like this. They look at uh, what they, uh, these items cost last year or last month. Also look at what they cost now and then find the proportional differences uh, between them. That gives the inflation rate. However, RPI uh, is different from CPI in that there will be the RPI includes uh, rate uh, rate of housing costs, changes in housing costs, so uh, changes in rent, monthly rent, so annual rents, uh, mortgage for, for example, mortgage payments is one example, council tax and rates for example, these are included in RPI while CPI doesn't have this. Um, while these, you know, the the, the the this difference here the basket of bas the items included in these two uh, baskets of goods basically um, uh, have significant effects on what how we sort of uh, calculate for example our interest rates on loans I'll explain what what this actually means in a minute but so let's go ahead for now what uh, with other measures of inflation. GDP deflator is one other uh, measure of inflation. It's the rate of uh, inflation in the economy, whole economy, it takes into account basically every uh, uh, single good produced in, 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 in one country. And we have wage inflation, well it takes the wages of workers or certain uh, categories of workers and, and compares, its, uh, compares the wage of the last year for example to calculate how much wage inflation occurred in the economy and uh, there is also inflation rate of commodity prices and, and many others actually in fact there are quite a few others that we are not going to look at today okay so let's look at the difference between cpi and uh, rpi so cpi consumer price index rpi retail price index notice that the um, the orange brown uh, line here is the rpi index it's a bit l higher the rate of uh, inflation according to RPI index is, is higher than the CPI index. This is because, as I said, uh, the, the RPI in this years, in between 2000 and 2012, included the uh, RPI included the uh, costs of uh, uh, rent, renting or housing costs and council tax costs. Yeah? So if the rent costs increased well, in fact, you notice this. This is I'll, I'll demonstrate what I am going to say here with an example. So look at this now. CPI basically is growing. It's around one percent. It's actually growing over time, uh, but it's the growth rate is of the growth is quite slow. You know, it, this in the in the y, y, y axis we have the percentages. Notice that this is percentages, not the levels. While the percentage rate of uh, RPI is jumping you see this from this period to this period increases by more than one percentage point you see in RPI so this 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 must have been driven by the cost of uh, cost of living uh, or or maybe council tax or things like this that are not included in CPI so both of RPI and CPI include majority of the goods the same goods basically except that RPI includes the housing cost this is usually you know the housing cost is usually very uh, volatile so this is the period in up to 2000 and uh, where the tick dot com bubble occurred the housing basically was increased and there was dot com bubble burst and we had this decline in the economic activity and I assume the housing price or housing cost declined as well that ref is reflected here as you can see it declined however notice that CPI didn't change much here in fact it's increasing while the RPI declined this is because CPI doesn't have the housing costs included in there so we s in fact so the consumer price is increasing on average during this pr period and then obviously they had this sort of uh, uh, growth while the CPI RPI again picked up again later and and if you remember between 2003 and 2007 until this financial crisis we had a boom in the housing market as a result rents were increasing had been increasing in this period basically and this is reflected in RPI while CPI didn't grow much it, it grew but it kept steadily growing 
unlike the unlike the um, RPI index. RPI has always been higher because of the renting housing costs. And suddenly in 2007 there was a housing bubble and it burst. And remember the housing costs declined because of the glut in the market. So that's that's included uh, reflected here. You see this. The, everything basically experienced sort of low inflation in the economy, but then because of the decline in the housing costs, uh, we even had this. Uh, what you call deflation, so it's the, the RPI index went below zero basically, not this, yeah, it's a negative number here, uh, and then picked up again as the economy bounced back in, in after the financial crisis, and it's still now, beyond in after 2011, we've experienced the low rates of inflation and in terms of RPI and CPI, and notice what happened is in 2012, by 2012, this there is this sort of coin integration here, quite close a relationship between RCPI and RPI here now. Now notice this, this sort of deviations between RPI and CPI has uh, very much uh, uh, significant implications to how your, for example, student loan interest rates are calculated. If your student loan's uh, interest rate is indexed to RPI, um, you might be paying a bit more higher interest rate because the RPI reflects, uh, as I said, uh, contains the uh, rate of uh, inflation in in housing costs as well. If you, it is in indexed to CPI, then that's a different story. You see, it's usually lower. Um, so basically, there is sort of a slight decline or increase in CPI is uh, is leading to a greater increase in in, in CPI, RPI. You see, the in in this period between two thousand five and two thousand seven, we have this sort of two thousand six. There is an increase in both of the uh, measures, but then RPI had a greater increase. You see, so this is one uh, sort of a diff one uh, kind of sort of clear difference between the two. Basically, that that uh, the that's caused by the additional items being included here, and then banks usually reference RPI for their loan rates. And in the future, whatever if you are interested in applying for loans ask how the interest rate is indexed because we could expect interest, in, in, interest rates to be variable and floating in other words floating implies some sort of base rate is is referenced and this has shouldn't really be an RPI um, anyway so it's a bit of di di digression hopefully it was useful anyway now let's look at the uh, in, uh, case uh, sort of examples of uh, annual UK inflation rates. This is a def deflate, uh, the GDP deflator average price level in the whole economy. It's always positive, as you can see. It's, it was higher in the in the early 2000s and started declining slowly. Um, that slow slowing down also a, a, a sort of uh, evidence of economic activity slowing down as well in the UK because we didn't have major major uh, recessions as well so but apart from 2009 here yeah this is a big jump here apart from that there's not much sort of uh, volatility here but notice this uh, CPI index is actually quite volatile it increased sharply and sharply declining again um, the aggregate it, this really this part this Apart from 2012 onwards, this really depends on probably caused this decline in this sort of rate of inflation is caused by the aggregate demand. Um, it slowed down in a sense that we've been hearing in the in, in the newspapers and news that the economy has been hit by sort of different shocks and also the by 2000 and uh, what when was it? There was also a fear of. Uh, EU break referendum things like so David Cameron promised some silly things during the his campaign so there was an expectation of sort of economic slowdown firms shutting down or things like so this actually brought down the inflation rate lower uh, but in in prior to when the economy you know is 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 uh, is growing and aggregate demand increases we see that increasing there is a sh sharp increase in inflation rates because you know there is always demand for goods and services in a good uh, when in a well functioning economy in fact overheating economy and it leads to uh, a, a, a positive it leads to positive response from the uh, from the manufacturers and producers they produce more and more demand it and then the prices will increase as, as a result as well and notice this 
the last one here is the weekly uh, wage wage earnings uh, inflation now wages rose for example in in 2011 the prices average price rose by one percent while wage rose by six percent so we had real incomes higher the real incomes of about five percent higher than the rates of increase in inflation but then it carried on average uh, carried on being uh, continued being higher much more above the inflation rate on deflation uh, sorry GDP deflator and by standards of GDP deflator and CPI both cases uh, we had the positive earnings you know our wages on an annual basis increased by a higher rate than the inflation rate which is fine but then after the 2009 uh, crisis we had even I mean the wages started declining or the growth of wages I should say was lower than the CPI you know the average goods and and service that we consume on a monthly basis were growing in in price higher as you can see this this green line so if if a loaf of bread you know was a pound it was you know today it was four four percent higher next year while i received a hundred pound but then growth only of because of the wage growth of two percent i only received two pound extra um, in, let's, this is a probably a bad analogy, I mean bad example. Let's look at this again. You know, I want to buy something for £100. This year it's £100, but next year it's £104 according to CPI. And at the same time I'm receiving £100 wage. This year I'm receiving this £100, but next year I'm receiving £102. So my next year's wage is not basically sufficient to buy that thing, uh, which was, you know, £100 last year. And my wage was hundred pound. I expected the price to go down, and then my wages to go up. But then the opposite happened, and then prices went up by more than my wages. So I am now unable to purchase that good for my wages next year. Uh, and this is called my wages uh, purchasing power eroding. Basically, yeah? this is the situation of uh, real wages being lower. In other words, in real terms, we are not earning anything. You know, we are not basically gaining anything. We're just working, but not able to. Uh, not able to why we are not able to purchase the goods and services the same amount of goods and services as we did before so inflation erodes these earnings inflation is a good thing but it has to be stable not this volatile you see uh, the same with wages we don't want wages increasing continuously although we, we really want it but then things will be expensive because then this would be more like a cost push inflation which will be next topic because then firms will have to raise the prices to make profits but the good news is that coming to 2015 the uh, inflation rate hit you know tanked downwards you see quite quite fast while the wages you know they are still volatile there's no evidence of them increasing continuously but uh, in 2015 on average the wages rose by more than the inflation rate um, hopefully this this benefited the low wage earning people because if this is coming from bankers wages and things like you know high earning people's wages this for the whole economy there was little little uh, little sort of uh, benefit um, anyway the bankers bonuses for example million pound bonus in a year will usually be uh, included as a wage okay so let's go on examples of hyperinflations in in recent history in 1994 you can see the banknote yugoslavian banknote um, they had 500 billion whatever their banknote is this is huge inflation isn't it imagine this um, zimbabwe in 2008 had 100 billion bill wow so if you want to buy a car you just have uh, the car is uh, 1 trillion so you just need 10 of these 100 billion bills <laughs> um, in fact no um, this wasn't the case. I think 100 billion didn't buy much. Mm. Well, if the price keep rising, uh, you either have to have uh, everything in bank account, like in electronic cash, or uh, well, if banking system is not properly developed, then you have to have uh, to pay in banknotes, obviously, in, in cash, hard cash. And if you've only got the hundred pound notes, say for example, it's not enough. You have to have a big truck loads of banknotes. Yeah. Instead, the Zimbabwean government said, "Okay, we're going to issue this hundred billion note, and we issue many of you know. We don't have to then carry a lot of uh, banknotes. Yeah. So as a result, this this basically they ended up 
you know, because of the inflation rate rising or hyperinflation uh, experiencing the economy of Zimbabwe, they, they had to have this 100 billion note. In the next slides, you will see that the inflation actually has been increasing in Zimbabwe for a long time. Look at this now. In 2000, so uh, there was a 57% inflation. Well, what does it mean? It basically means if uh, something cost us £100 in the beginning of 2000, by the end of the year, that thing was £157 on average. Yeah, This is in dollars, the year dollars. So from to the end of 2000 and beginning uh, end of 2000 and then end of to to the to the end of 2001 the inflation rate basically doubled the prices basically you see 105 percent increase so on and so forth this is 585 percent wow this is huge amount so if you go on it looks like from 2005 it, it was it didn't make sense to calculate annual inflation rates look at the quarterly even so on in three months the, the the goods increased by eight times more you know the things that cost 100 pound became 773 pounds in the end you know in, in, the, in the within three months and then that next next quarter look at this huge inflation rate and in 2007 quarter four they experienced the more highest hyperinflation 40 wow forty thousand nine hundred and four eleven percent increase in the prices so a hundred pound thing is basically that much increase well that's a huge increase yeah so that's why probably we had that hundred they had that hundred billion now eventually they managed to tame the inflation rate wow that's even worse 6.5 10 to the power of 108 percent i don't know what how to read this number Okay, I'll leave it to you to figure out what this number could be but i can only sympathize with this population of zimbabwean yeah, Zimbabwe, and something happened. Miracle happened that then, and then their inflation rate back to, well, six percent. You know, this three percent, four and seven. I didn't read the news. I don't remember what happened. But if I remember, they started accepting U.S. dollars. Their own Zimbabwean dollars were, uh, were not, you know, were not used in circulation anymore. We weren't accepted anymore. I think, if I remember. Uh, the retailers were reluctant to accept because you know one Zimbabwean dollar was nothing the next next day so it just basically didn't mean anything it just it was a piece of papers to throw away so as a result Zimbabwean businesses started uh, demanding started demanding US dollars instead of uh, uh, instead of their own currency as payment for their goods and services so maybe that stabilized unless there is some there was something else some policy change sudden policy change anyway um next uh inflation rates in select industrial countries notice this is uk you have in the 1970s and 80s this huge inflation rate caused by fuel price increases um i think i mentioned this to you earlier the, the petroleum prices so petroleum back then petroleum was important because a lot of things were made of petroleum and much of the machinery required petroleum to run and there was sort of oil embargo by the arabs or arab members of opec and then that pushed up the prices and then well then you had all these transportation costs pr factored in the production of bread in the delivery of goods to st stores and houses and they it made the cost of uh, goods more expensive so for example if something costed about 100 pound in 2000 and, uh, sorry in 1994 by 1997 it, it uh, 1975 I should say for between 1973 or something like that yeah, it's 1973 and 1975 there was an huge increase in inflation yeah you see that i don't have to give that in, in, in example anymore but you can see that the rate of inflation by 1975 the the prices rose by what the 20 percentage point so this is a huge increase in in the cost of living but then with the thatcher that margaret thatcher's government coming on and then uh sort of uh they probably tamed the process basically properly managed the economy um, a lot of things that are pri in private hands today, like BT, BP, uh, Post, Royal Mail, um, a lot of other things. I don't remember which ones, but big, big businesses uh, were privatized eventually. On the, on the rail, National Rail, for example, British Rail became. I don't know how many rail companies are now there. Basically, they national. They sold them, sold the, sold the, 
privatized, I should say, the the, the government sold them to uh, to the uh, private companies to manage uh, because it wasn't possible to manage them on the, on after these years of long years of mismanagement by labor apparently. Now USA. USA did experience inflation as well because of the same reason the oil price increases and other 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 changes. But eventually, this you see the developed economy. So, developed economies, the inflation rate in developed economies is usually around two percent, and that's what this is here. And they target the banks usually target banks, uh, central banks usually target the rate to be about two percent. So this being managed in in a in a more sensible way. And EU fifteen, so EU's original fifteen uh, countries the same sort of pattern Japanese one is uh, a bit uh, interesting here notice that Japan also experienced all these rises in living costs but then they managed to bring it down because it you know they weren't reliant on Arab oil oil price uh, oil uh, deliveries that much as much as the West was at the time but Japan experienced something very uh, significant that altered its economic, uh, its growth basically. You see, this, this, there was all this period, it was a deflation. So, so something that cost 100 pounds started costing only 95, then, ni then went on 90 to 90, 80. All these years, the prices went down. It, it grew rapidly in the 70s and 80s. It was more efficient, more efficient than the other countries. Yeah, it, that's why it probably. Um, it, well, it didn't consume as much oil as well at the same time, but it grew fast. It it caught up with uh, with Britain. Even even had uh, its current economy is bigger than bigger than than uh, than Britain's. But but back then, for example, it was a it was a fast growing economy. But now it's not. Uh, it's because of the stall in the economy uh, growth. Now it for some reason stopped growing as fast, and in fact experienced a downward. Uh, uh, output growth these days, so this negative so inflation rate or deflation rate is is, is sort of a result of this outcome of or consequence of all this fast growth that they experience in the early stages. Um, well, I think it's the monetary policy that was wrong at the time. Uh, if I remember, the spending, the aggregate demand is going down there. The aging population is is a concern. Uh, for the Japanese government, there was also an experiment in which the government basically gave people cash, hard cash, to spend on goods and services. Because if there is a spending, there will be more economic activity come. But what happened is that these people actually, instead of spending this money, they actually even saved them further. So government was surprised to see that. Imagine you get this ten thousand pounds suddenly tomorrow. You know what would you do next morning? I think you would probably go out and spend it. Uh, but the Japanese didn't do that in, during this period. They actually kept it. I don't know why. P probably they expected further the recession, so they thought maybe we'll need the cash. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, gonna take time to carry on talking. Now, in the next video, we will talk about the types of inflation uh, in, in a, from a theoretical point of view. For now, this 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 will end. This video will end, and then see you in the next video.